Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and I am back with a new video. This one's going to be all about Alvo. Now as you may know already, Alvo released an updated gameplay clip to PS Viewer Without Parole's YouTube channel. So they debuted us and what I have here is I've taken that footage. I want to go through that footage and I want to see what we can see, what we can learn from this footage that maybe we didn't know before. Uh, we might see something interesting. So I've muted it because there's commentary over it, but you know, this is, I don't think the audio is really important here, so we're just going to go by what we can see visually. I suppose the first thing to note here is that these guns have attachments. You're looking at a, a hollow sight that looks pretty similar to what you'd see in Firewall. Of course, the comparisons to Firewall are going to be kind of unavoidable because it's pretty much the only other first person shooter unless you include honor and Ducey d-day which was made by one man i'm not sure it's fair to include that everyone and their mother are comparing alvo and firewall so that's kind of what i'm doing here as well even though there are huge differences uh you'll get a sense of this when just from watching the gameplay basically alvo so much more fast paced uh, much more Call of Duty, Firewall, much more Rainbow Six, Siege, or something along those lines. So as I was saying, anyway, you can see we've got the hollow sight similar to Firewall. Also got the laser going on there as well. Uh, interestingly there on the back, it says Killstreak. Uh, I don't see any number beside it. So I'm assuming Killstreak will, will pop up on the back of your gun there on that little floating UI. Uh, when you have one available to use. Now we've seen some of these kill streaks teased on their Twitter and stuff like that. I believe there's there's a dog, perhaps a terrorist as well, and a remote control car. I'm not 100% sure on those, but I think just going by memory that that's what I've seen. Not 100% sure about the dog now that I think about it, but definitely a remote control car that will probably detonate like an explosive. Uh, one more thing I should mention about this as well. It is not confirmed that this footage that we're looking at right now is running on PS Viewer hardware. This could be Oculus, and considering it's a playtest they're talking about in this video, it probably is running on Rift or Vive or something like that on PC. Uh, so what we get on PS Viewer may be slightly different to what we're seeing here. Fingers crossed, not too much different. Anyway, let me play this video. Let's talk about the map first of all. I believe there's four maps included at launch in this game. I could be wrong. Once again, things change, of course. Uh, but this map I think is the very first map we ever saw for Alvo. That time when they released that teaser trailer, which I'm pretty sure was CG rendered at the time. This looks like that area. It's like a town, like a marketplace. Uh, you got shop interiors and stuff like that. Now, if you look here, we can see we got hit indicators. I'm not sure we saw those before, but uh, I think they've definitely changed the design of those. They'll help you uh, figure out where you're getting sh shot at from. Uh, very important in a game like this. Every first person shooter has it really. It's not special or anything like that, but worth noting. So let's move on a little bit. So this is maybe my favorite detail about Alvo that I've seen so far. Let's just go back and nudge. You can see as he's shooting this dude here, uh, these hit markers appear. So comparing to Firewall, when you get the hit, you don't get a visual hit marker in Firewall. You got to listen. It's the, all about the audio. Whereas in this game, that visual hit marker that looks very much like a Call of Duty hit marker appears on the enemy itself which i like you know it's a nice little touch and you know just makes you 100 percent sure yes i tagged that dude let's go back a little bit here i wanted to see if we can get the time to kill or like an idea of the time to kill it's hard to tell because the guy over here is engaging with the dude over here but hold on it seems very quick there but it could have been like a 2v1 situation so we'll have to look for a time to kill comparison somewhere else in this video so now we've moved on we've transitioned to this next map which is the uh, castle snowy castle cathedral church type area i believe which is the second map the other map then i think is the desert one and the fourth one is escaping me right now somebody can let me know in the comments but yeah just the okay so that's important what we just saw right there this guy just jumped uh you're not going to see this in firewall he's up on level one we'll say and he just hops down. He presses the X button, which I believe is the jump button. We've seen the layout for these controllers. He hops down. It's fast paced. It's very much like Call of Duty. Just another thing to point out here is kind of the improvements to like particle effects and stuff like that. And the textures in the wall here even look pretty nice. Now again, this isn't running on PS Viewer, I don't think. Uh, so that could change, but like, that looks nice. It's not looking like, you know, your AAA big budget game. But it's looking better than what we saw in that reveal trailer that was a few months ago now at this stage. Uh, this is much improved footage, I think. Got some ragdoll, which is always lovely to see. 
And uh, we're going to see an example here of this guy climbing up these crates here. He just, you know, hop, 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 he's up. Uh, my wonder about this now is how this game is going to handle motion sickness. So the reason, that, a big reason that Firewall doesn't include all that kind of, like, jumping and fast pace is, one, number one, you could argue realism. But number two, and the biggest reason, I would say, is just to combat the motion sickness. Uh, I know people who get sick from playing Farpoint, for example, uh, who don't get sick from playing Firewall. And then this game looks like it's a notch above Farpoint, even. I would say it's more kind of fast-paced, and you can... There's more potential for motion sickness here in Alvo. Fingers crossed. It doesn't affect me usually, so I'm not worried about myself, but fingers crossed for most of the players looking forward to this game, it's not going to be an issue for them. So yeah, you know, that's a good example here of the time to kill. Uh, this guy took a considerable amount of shots before he was down. I'm not sure what gun is being used here. I'm not sure if the guns are based on real guns. Um, I'm not sure if they have the real, like the licensing. I would imagine they probably don't. But whatever gun this guy's using, maybe it's just an AK. I can't tell from this angle. Uh, it doesn't look like an AK from that angle, but customization and stuff could be messing with my perception. Plus, I'm never good with guns anyway, in terms of identifying them and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, this guy's getting shot from the back. He takes a few shots before he's dropped. Uh, I would say, what, six, seven, eight shots there before he was downed? So while this game does have a lot of COD, uh, Call of Duty kind of rapid, you know, you're in, you're dead, you respawn, you're in, you kill, you're dead, you respawn over and over again. Uh, it looks like, you know, you got some health here. Now, I don't know about, um, you know, armor and stuff like that. I'm not sure if that's an, a factor to consider here. Uh, but that dude certainly seemed to take more shots than I was expecting. And as I say that, that guy just seemed to instantly drop. But then again, I don't know, was he at full health? Uh, hold on, <laughs> let's play that again. Yeah, he went down pretty quick, so it's hard to know. Maybe he took some damage beforehand. Maybe there was a headshot involved. And that's the end of the trailer. Yeah, so one thing you might notice is that, like, like just look at this. You can tell this isn't going to be a AAA title. Like, you're just in, coming into this building here. You've got your walls. you got some boxes and stuff here. It's just, I don't want to criticize it for this too much because it's not that important. Uh, but it's, like, it's not very detailed, if you know what I mean. There's not a lot of assets being used here. We've got some cardboard boxes of Paris, you know, there's a few oil drums. Um, it feels a little bit cardboardy, like these buildings. Just going by this, this one particular building that I'm looking at, that seems to be the kind of vibe I'm getting. Uh, not that that's a big deal, but I would just say keep your expectations in check when it comes to the production value of this game. This game does not have firewalls budgets, you know, it doesn't have firewalls uh, size in terms of the team. I think it's very small, like Less than 10, maybe. Don't quote me on that, but it is a small team. Of course, the other question that remains then is three or four maps at launch. Pretty sure it's four. How long are they going to stay, you know, uh, exciting? Uh, how long before we need more maps? Firewall launched with nine maps, and it felt like it wasn't long at all before people were kind of crying out for more. But we will wait and see. These maps are bigger, so maybe that'll be a big factor uh, in terms of extending the enjoyment period out of replaying these maps over and over again. Uh, so that's something definitely you should keep in mind. But yeah, I think there's not too much more I can gleam from this gameplay here that I haven't already talked about. There's a couple of interesting things I haven't seen in this game yet that I'm, I want to know how it'll work. For example, reloading. I haven't noticed any reloading animations going on. So I wonder is that you just you press a button and then it's like automatically loading like, even though there's no animation, maybe that's just not there. Um, another thing I want to see is just a more variety of weapons. I know grenades are confirmed and stuff like that, but I haven't seen them in action. Uh, and considering this game has, like, a bunch of control types, including move controllers... Uh, I should be playing this on loop. Including move controllers, aim controller, DualShock, it has all that stuff. I wonder, what's it going to be like when you're playing with the move controllers compared to an aim controller? Am I going to be throwing the grenades physically? Uh, aim controller, you would imagine that's going to be a button press. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, that is it for now. It wasn't, a, it's not long gameplay. There isn't an awful lot you can tell. Uh, but it's like, it's nice to see this progression. This does look like a big step up from that reveal trailer we got back in November, December, whenever that was. 
uh, also on the PSVR Without Parole YouTube channel. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if I missed a bunch of stuff. I'm sure I probably did. Uh, we do know that this game is going to be submitted to Sony for an open beta in the middle of May. So let's say in two weeks' time, that's when they're going to submit it. How long it's going to take to get through that QA uh, testing from Sony is anyone's guess. I'm not going to expect it in May unless it's like perfect and ready to go. Um, but just judging by past experience with other VR titles, they seem to always get held up in QA. So maybe June is kind of what I'm hoping for. Uh, hopefully it doesn't slip as far as July, August, something like that for the open beta I'm talking about. And then, of course, we've got the question of how long after the open beta are we going to see the full release? Fingers crossed it won't take that long. But if there's a lot of feedback from the players, if there's a lot of problems, uh, that's going to take time to fix, you know? So, yeah, that's kind of it for this video. Before I end this video, let me give a special thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen right now. Thanks to their generosity. It really helps keep this channel going. In particular, let me give a shout out to the top tier pledgers, Tradition, Pete Hawkins, Columbus Thomas III, and Crumb. Thank you very much for your generosity. I really do appreciate it. Also, check out Decepticon.com for the music in these videos. His latest album, Screens and Dreams, is free over on Bandcamp, but you can also listen to him on Spotify or wherever it is you get your music.